my father immigrated from England and uh, settled in Kootenay Lake in British Columbia. He started installing some of the very first phones ever installed around Nelson and Trail in British Columbia there. And uh, so he had a great affinity towards telephones and I guess that kind of rubbed off onto me. And he always impressed upon me that if you think of all the inventions made by man, uh, whether it's the automobile or the tire or the wheel, you know, or penicillin or, or wh whatever, uh, the telephone might be the greatest invention ever known to mankind. He says, you know, you, you should start collecting telephones because now that the telephone companies are going out to all the houses and they're taking all these old phones out because nobody wants an old phone in their home. They want to get this new stuff. It would be uh, something fun to do and and not many people are doing it and it would be fairly cheap to to, to get started because the phone company was throwing a lot of these old phones away and uh, they would just dump them or trash them or bust them up and put them in the garbage. And it was actually very good advice because telephones have just skyrocketed. Who would have ever thought at the time, you know, when people were saying they got to get rid of this junk out of their house and get a more modern phone, that they would now be something that is really, really uh, uh, valuable. I would have to say that phones that I got for next to nothing now, some of them are worth four or five, six or more thousands of dollars. And so it's been better than uh, putting your money in the bank. In 1976, I went back to Philadelphia. And while I was back there, my father said to me, he said, Don, you need to go to the Smithsonian and look at their telephone collection. I've never seen it. I don't know what they've got or anything. Go back there and take a look. Well, I did. And it was then and only then did I realize that we had a better collection than they have at the Smithsonian. And so I came back and told my father about this. And he says, you know, I hope that you will carry it on and uh, improve on it. And, uh, and that's what I've done. I have phones all the way from Bell's first phone clear up through today's landline phones. What you see in my collection virtually covers the entire gamut of the various styles from the time that they first were developed by Bell, going from 1876 up to today. And it's thought of to be one of the finest in the United States, possibly in the world. The phone was a very complicated piece of equipment and it scared a lot of people. In the early days, the further away you were from the person you were talking to, the louder you had to speak into the phone to transmit it clearly enough to the other end of the line. Sometimes if you were talking long distance, you had to talk pretty loud to get your voice to carry. And so they made what was known as a hushaphone. And so he could talk into it as loud as he wanted to and it wouldn't interfere with everybody. <laughs> it was really acoustically a pretty, pretty neat gadget that allowed you to just literally yell into it and you wouldn't be disrupting anybody around you. This is a Jim Beam bottle. Oh, it's unopened. It's the unopened. The seal is still on there. The seal is still there. Yeah. It uh. still has the, the bourbon in there, but I think this is supposed to be a hundred month old uh, bourbon. It's probably about a thousand month old bourbon now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's worth more that way. You know, the way I feel, I have preserved the history of communications as it relates to the telephone. And being part of that is, is very satisfying. I think my legacy is going to be that at least I wrote down some of the history of this most important area of communications. It, it's something that, that makes you feel like as though you've, you've done something for humanity and uh, you, you, you left something instead of just gone through life willy-nilly and never made an impact on the time that you're on this earth.